What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I have uh, returned looking uh, you know a little bit uh, a little bit rough as if I've just emerged from a really long uh, spree of research um, and keeping my head down looking uh, maybe a little bit uh, rough around the edges here. Today I want to talk about something that I've been thinking about uh, a lot lately and that is that I think humans are really good uh, at being able to distinguish things that are close to what they would consider normal um, or sort of normally scaled, reasonably scaled, things that, uh, you know, aren't normal in their everyday experience. That's sort of vague, so let me give you an example. I think most people are used to thinking about, let's say, money uh, for day-to-day -day activities in terms of maybe a few dollars or whatever currency they use. So if you were to go down to a store and you were to uh, spend $5 or maybe $10, it's very easy for you to distinguish uh, $5 from $10. At least in terms of the physical currency, it feels like uh, with today's prices, uh, you know, maybe $5 and $10 aren't really worth all that much anymore. Maybe these, this is a small quantity now. But I would say that these two quantities of money are extremely distinguishable. Firstly, 10 is uh, twice the amount of money as five, um, and the difference between 10 minus five is $5. So I think intuitively at first glance, the difference between two quantities um, is the quantity that we rely on for our intuition. It's the difference that matters somehow. But I think if you reflect a little bit, you'll see that this isn't what uh, we as humans actually care about. We seem to have sort of a normal scale of things that uh, are very close to our experience, that perhaps the difference is enough. And for other things, um, it very clearly isn't. So for example, if instead I was to go to the store, and instead of having a very unambitious uh, grocery store run with five or $10, I instead go and spend 105 or $110. Now these numbers are, um, the same distance apart in sort of an absolute scale, it's still a difference of $5. But I hope that immediately right away you see that these numbers don't feel as distinguishable. It's almost like 110 um, is closer to the number 105 uh, in terms of money than $5 is to $10. So it's still a difference of $5, but I think you should agree that this is uh, somehow different. It's like the magnitude matters here. So psychologists have studied this uh, and that it's that on its own is um, its own rabbit hole and that's not what I'm going to talk about today. Um, it doesn't seem like there is a surefire good way to fit you know this sort of phenomena or observation into one type of maybe formula for example uh, but they've certainly tried so you can look up things like uh, Stevens power law um, if you want to dive into that rabbit hole for us it might be easiest to frame uh, this in terms of relative distance between numbers so you could have uh, like the following quantity so instead of a difference you also divide out one of the numbers to give uh, the relative distance a scale. And so if we think about normal numbers being about on the scale of let's say uh, zero to 10 maybe, um, comparing numbers in that range is really easy, but it becomes hard to distinguish things uh, when they are too far away from our normal experience. This observation uh, also uh, extends to things that are too small, of course. Uh, so we might think uh, that there is a that there is somehow a, a middle ground, you know, the human niche normal area uh, that we're really good at distinguishing things. Um, and then there's sort of a, uh, you know, we're sort of uh, asymptotically bad at distinguishing things that are too big and too small. So another example could be comparing things like weight. It's easier to tell the difference between five kilograms and 10 kilograms. You're probably gonna have difficult telling one gram and two grams apart, or on the higher end, you're gonna have an issue telling uh, 200 uh, kilograms and 205 kilograms apart. So we have our niche middle perspective uh, that we're really good at. So far, all of the examples that I've brought up um, have been 
uh, things that are easy to quantify. I think this uh, this extends to other um, important cases in the human experience. Like I think this is a universal experience in basically every aspect of our life. Reflecting on this precise point and this precise phenomena or observation, uh, this has really helped me tackle sort of the imposter syndrome um, or the feeling of being an imposter that I've had uh, in my postdoc so far. So when I was coming uh, into my master's, I had the pleasure of being uh, mentored by more senior uh, PhD students um, and a postdoc. And this mentorship also included, uh, you know, successful research projects with a postdoc. Now, at this point in time, I was really naive and new to research. And of course, I looked up to these people, and I still do. These are people that are very worthy of admiration. They're all very kind and super talented people. But as a master's student, I think I ended up constructing unrealistic expectations uh, based off of my interactions with these people that were more senior to me. They all seemed to be bottomless pits of physics knowledge to me. We would look for projects uh, to work on together. They would often lead the discussion, bring up interesting ideas and articles, and point me in directions uh, that they thought would be fruitful. Uh, with my postdoc friend, uh, this led to a few articles, and importantly, the development of the code that I rely on heavily uh, to do my research today. And in parallel to interacting with these more senior PhD students, and, uh, and postdocs, I was also um, exploring projects uh, with my supervisor, doing the exact same thing, looking for fruitful directions um, and questions to ask. And it was during all of this that I think I really didn't have the perspective to really understand the difference between a tenure track physicist or a tenured physicist um, and let's say, uh, you know, a really motivated postdoc. To me, all of the processes that I was going through with different physicists felt, you know, quite similar. My supervisor uh, just felt much more experienced and definitely had much more literature knowledge. And it was around this time where I started to set goals for myself of what I wanted to be like as a PhD student or a more senior PhD student um, and a junior postdoc. I wanted to be, you know, very knowledgeable, knowledgeable enough to potentially be, you know, around the corner from being able to pave my own path in research. I basically built up this picture in my mind that once you started your postdoc, uh, you either had it or you didn't uh, to become, you know, sort of a tenure track professor, sort of like it would be obvious to me. It would just be a matter of time before I read enough literature, um, and it would sort of just be, I don't know, obvious. And so now we can fast forward to now where I am a postdoc. And to be honest with you, I never really reevaluated um, this naive impression that I had as a master's student. And so to me, it's, it's very clear in hindsight that I was experiencing this phenomena of struggling to distinguish very talented people that were much further down their road in research than I was. And I think this makes, you know, a lot of sense. I mean, if you can think about maybe, you know, maybe your friend group right now, you might have someone that's really good at analytics, you might have someone who's really good at numerical computing, and but perhaps both, uh, both of your two friends uh, do both. They both do analytical work, they both do uh, numerical work. To you, it's very easy to distinguish them and say, you know, this person has this strength, this person has that strength. But at the end of the day, I mean, if you were to ask a lay person or even an undergraduate student, they would probably struggle to really come to the same conclusions um, as you did. You have a much better picture uh, because that's your normal. And for people on the outside, you know, it's not normal. It's, it's extremely hard to tell the difference. And I think as a graduate student, it especially a, a, you know, a master's degree student, uh, that also applies to people at like sort of the postdoc and uh, professor level. At least it did to me. I couldn't really distinguish this. So I was definitely experiencing this phenomenon. I definitely built up my expectations uh, with this misconception. Um, and now I have the pleasure of being where uh, these more senior people uh, were um, in my life when I formed these assumptions. So starting my postdoc was uh, difficult, uh, of course, for just logistical reasons. Moving across the world uh, is 
you know, a logistical challenge, not to mention expensive. Joining uh, topics or research projects that are field adjacent topics um, can actually be, you know, very difficult to get into. Uh, but that's of course okay. I, like the people that are more senior are of course all aware of this because they went through it, but it definitely took um, a bit of time uh, to get a handle on my project, but I am contributing, I think at a high level now. In the early stages, in the early months of uh, me being here, it became very apparent um, that I wasn't at the level that I projected onto my more senior counterparts uh, when I was a master's student. So it became really, uh, it became really apparent that I wasn't uh, what I thought I should be um, at this point uh, in my career. And it took me a while to sort of process this. And something that really uh, helped put everything into perspective, you know, as I always advocate on this channel, is I just, I just talked to people that were more experienced than me, that already went through this. And it's uh, extremely clear to me now that, that my sort of bad assumptions, my bad projections onto my more senior counterparts uh, really caused this really big misunderstanding that made me sort of panic about my progress. I've heard it said that uh, postdocs are just really good PhD students. And I feel like that's not only accurate, but I feel like that's exactly where I am right now. I can contribute to ambitious projects. I can be onboarded. Uh, to new projects at a much faster rate than I could before. And I'm currently really good at my particular niche of doing um, exact numerical calculations for quantum many body systems, spin systems, qubit systems. And I of course have some uh, research ideas, but they aren't exactly, you know, at the stage yet that it would be realistic for me to run my own, you know, many body physics research group. I still need more time um, and exposure uh, to different uh, physics topics uh, and directions and you know ways of thinking. And so thinking about this phenomena really helped me get over my you know feelings of being an imposter. Well, thinking about the phenomena and then also talking to people who had been through this stage in their life already and could tell me what was normal. So I'm definitely more aware of how I'm supposed to grow to become uh, tenure track material, or at least I'm aware of what areas I need to grow. Uh, actually growing those areas is absolutely a different question. And so despite this big inner turmoil that I've been going through that seems to be more or less resolved, um, things are actually going really well in my research. I'm going to be putting out an article, um, hopefully soon, where I'll actually be the most senior physicist on the project. So this is quite uh, nerve-wracking, to be honest. Prior to this, I've always had the ability to rely on more, you know, senior researchers to be that last, uh, you know, stamp of approval uh, for quality. Um, and uh, now it's just me. So I'm the person writing the introduction. I'm the person proofreading and making sure everything is good. And actually, perhaps I'll make a video about uh, this article. I think the results are, you know, easy to understand. It's easy to understand why it's an important question. Um, and the results are easy to understand. Uh, so I think it's actually a really good candidate to show on the channel. I know some people have asked for uh, more research uh, videos. And I think one of the really cool things about thinking about this and going through this ex this experience is it's allowed me to go through a process where I've humanized the people that I've looked up to for quite some time. So now that I'm in their shoes or the shoes that they were in uh, when they met me and when they mentored me, I can now look back and understand them better like from a more human perspective. So I'm definitely full of holes as a researcher. Um, I'm still quite aware that I have a lot of work ahead of me um, and I have a lot of growing to do. Uh, it's not linear, it's not inevitable. Um, you know, I need to push myself uh, to reach that next level. Uh, but I also think that, you know, it's fun to look back and share this experience with people, um, this process of humanizing people, you know, and being transparent is, uh, is really important. Um, and I hope that somehow my videos on these topics, you know, accelerate your journey on this. Hopefully my normal is something that you can use to realize that your normal is normal. That's it for today's rant. I hope to see you guys in uh, the coming weeks. I should be posting uh, videos more regularly again.